Hi everyone, it's Steph and I'm happy to be back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about blindness and specifically books that have to do with eyesight loss, either partial eyesight loss or complete eyesight loss. So first up on our list is All the Light We Cannot See. And All the Light We Cannot See is about two young people, one who was growing up in Germany and the other is growing up in Paris, France at the time of World War II. So our young woman in Paris, France, her name is Marie Lahr, I think is how we say her name, and she has complete eyesight loss and her father has helped her to navigate the city independently and understand kind of how to navigate her world without eyesight. So it's really neat to see how she adjusts to the changes that occur to Paris during World War II, how she picks up on the political climate and the political changes and the relationship changes between the community and her neighbors during this horrific time in world history. So it's really neat to see how that impacts her growth as a teenager and how it impacts her worldview and her experiences of the world. The next book we have is Not By Sight by Kate Breslin. This is a story that takes place in England during World War I. It's about Grace, who is a suffragette, and then we have Jack, who is a gentleman in society. Jack is on a mission, and they're at an event. The two of them are across the room from each other but have never met, and there ends up being an event that occurs loses his eyesight, and thus their story begins, and the two of them end up meeting each other later on again. Since Jack has lost his eyesight, he also has become more temperamental, and Grace kind of befriends him and gets to know him, and he gets to know her without judging a book by its cover, essentially. He's kind of having a humbling experience and also kind of learning to look past the outside of a person. But he's learning how to be a more thoughtful, more considerate, more giving person. Up next we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And Jane Eyre is a story of Jane, who is going from childhood to adulthood and interacting with people in her family, in her school, and then in her work experience become a strong and resilient woman. Blindness doesn't come into play until later on in the story, but it's nonetheless a transforming moment for one of the pivotal characters in Jane Eyre and allows that character to realize some of the errors of their ways and also have a humbling experience and be more considerate of others. So that's an important element of Jane Eyre and has a strong impact on the conclusion of the story. So without giving spoilers, I'll just leave it at that. Our next two books have to do with partial eyesight loss, so this is different from the others which deal with complete eyesight loss. First of these partial eyesight loss books is Dear Mr. Knightley. It takes place in present day. Dear Mr. Knightley is of course influenced by references to Emma Woodhouse from Jane Austen's classic book Emma, and Sam is our main character. She is asked to write to her benefactor Mr. Knightley as the one condition to her receiving grant money to pay for her graduate school experience. She's aging out of the foster care system, so she's describing that experience and what it's like to find her own way in the world and be more open, be more trusting of others, to let down her guard and build relationships that are going to last. She also befriends a man named Alex during this experience and she learns that Alex has partial eyesight loss. So it's not a main point in the plot, but I thought it was really interesting that the whole reason this comes about is because Sam is spending time with Alex and turns to him and says, why are you always on this side? Just curious, why, why do you do that? And he looks at her and he's like, no one's ever asked me that. The people who are closest to him in his life are aware of his eyesight loss, but people who do not know him personally are not aware that he lost his eyesight in one eye due to a high school sports injury. So I thought that was interesting, and then afterwards, from that point onward in their friendship, she begins to intentionally place herself in his line of vision so that they can interact and see one another fully. Another partial eyesight loss book is one I've mentioned before. It's called Lies, Love, and uh, yes, Lies, Love, and Breakfast at Tiffany's by Julie Wright, and this has a main character named Sylvia who has a glass eye in one of her eyes because she had cancer when she was young, she lost the eye, and it's been replaced with a glass eye. So it's really neat to see her experience. I know nothing about glass eyes, I don't know anyone who has partial eyesight loss, so it's really interesting for me just to learn, kind of observe what's that like for her. Really neat insight into what it's like for her to go about the world with partial eyesight loss, so it was really neat to see. 
Next up, we have True to You. This is by Becky Wade, and this is a really sweet contemporary romance story about a young woman named Nora, and Nora is a researcher, specifically ancestry. She meets a man named John, who is an ex-Navy SEAL. He no longer works overseas, but he trains others to prepare for disasters and conduct safety protocols. John comes to Nora because he's trying to research into some of his family history. Meanwhile, he also learns very early on in the story that he's beginning to lose his eyesight. And he's trying to figure out what does that mean for his future, for his future job, his future relationships, his future life. What does that, what does that look like for him and how can he navigate the world knowing that his eyesight is beginning to deteriorate. So it's a really interesting look at what that's like for him and what that's like anticipating this eyesight loss as opposed to someone who has sudden eye loss, which is our next and final book. Our last book is by one of my favorite authors, Sarah Eden, and this is called Love Remains. Yes, Love Remains. This takes place in the 1800s, mid-1800s in Wyoming, and we have this great historical fiction story about Cecily who arrives to a small community to teach and help a young student by the name of Finbar. And Finbar O'Connor lives with his older brother Tavish, and Tavish has been trying to shelter and protect Finbar as he has been very despondent since his sudden eye loss, and he doesn't know really quite what to do with himself and how to navigate the world anymore, and Cecily is brought in to assist him with that. And there are all sorts of clever, witty dialogue and funny banter. It makes for a really great read and it's such an educational experience. It's such an educational experience into what it's like for people who with eyesight loss or who are losing their eyesight loss as to how they go about the world, as to the kind of things that they need in place, such as having a specific spot for household items so you know where to find them, being able to use a, a walking cane or stick, being able to identify your surroundings, and being able to function as an independent person with eyesight loss. It's all about empowerment, it's all about motivating and being positive and hopeful, even in challenging times that there's hope and there is something to look forward to and better days to come. And I love all those themes. I love the teaching element of this story. It's really, really great to see this story of hope and bringing direction to someone's life and helping them find their way back to who they want to be, being their best self. So I love all those elements. I love all these stories open up so many different ideas and help broaden my understanding of what it's like for people with partial or complete eyesight loss or anything in between to what it's like for them to go about the world, what challenges do they have to overcome, and what kind of things are a major deal for them. I really enjoy seeing what it's like for other people to navigate the world with any sort of disability, but I especially enjoy seeing them overcome any kind of obstacles or challenges that prohibits them from being their fullest self and being a part of the world in whatever capacity that they can be. So I love seeing that they can have happy, fruitful, hopeful, joy-filled lives. No matter what our ability is, we all deserve that. So that's enough for today. You may have guessed I like talking about books with disabilities, so I'm always on the lookout for more. If you have read any books with blindness, please tell me down below if I forgot to include them in this list. And if you have read any of the books in this list, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about these books. So thanks so much for watching, keep reading, and keep staying uh, positive, looking for the sunshine in life, and we're getting through everything together. So it was good to see you here again today, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Take care and have a great day.